Florida or South Carolina? Are you relocating and considering both of these locations? Or maybe you relocated to Florida or live in Florida and trying to determine whether or not it's time to relocate. I know back when my wife and I relocated to South Carolina back in 2015, Florida was one of the top spots on our list. Ultimately, we chose South Carolina. I'll get into my reasons why a little bit later, but in the back of my head, I always wondered, were we missing out on Florida? I mean, on paper, it seemed awesome. No state income tax, amazing weather, beautiful beaches, sprawling downtowns with so much entertainment and dining and my beloved Miami Dolphins. But is it all it's cracked up to be? Of course, a lot of this is gonna come down to personal perspective, but interesting enough, as a real estate agent here in South Carolina, I've helped multiple people in the last couple years relocate to South Carolina after initially taking the leap to Florida. Some originally from up north gave it a try, some from California that gave it a try, and others that were born and raised there. So what gives? Why did they ultimately decide Florida was no longer right for them? When it sounds like that piece of paradise. Well, in this video, I'm gonna compare South Carolina versus Florida. What are the pros? What are the cons? And I'm an agent here in South Carolina, but I'm gonna do my best to not be biased because there are tons of great things about Florida. I mean, again, if you followed me long enough, you know I'm a Miami Dolphin fan. But do the pros outweigh the cons? In the end, that's up for you to decide. But let's talk about the facts of it so you can best compare. But if you're new to the channel, I put videos out like this every week, teaching you about the Midlands of South Carolina, Lexington, Columbia, and the Lake Murray area. I do neighborhood tours, pros and cons, driving tours, and so much more. So make sure to subscribe. But either way, let's get started with weather and natural disasters, the big one. Now again, weather, I've always said, comes down to personal perspective. What you prefer, what you don't prefer, is ultimately up to you. And again, overall, Florida seems like the prime spot for weather, probably the most mild winters you get. Outside of maybe Hawaii, you know, beautiful sun, palm trees just about year round. I know some people love the idea of this. I know my mom would be one of them. But again, is it all it's cracked up to be? Interesting enough, I had multiple people tell me, while the thought of summer year round seems awesome, after a few years, they said the vanity wears off. You almost itch for it to cool down just a little bit. You want to open your windows at night. You want to pull out that winter jacket that you bought years ago. But those days just don't seem to come especially the more Southern in Florida you go. And that's where we became known as the halfback state. Those people from up North that went down to Florida and made it halfway back home, finding home here in South Carolina. Because at least here in the Midlands of South Carolina, we don't get snow, at least not what Northerners would consider snow, as we see less than an average of one inch per year here in the Midlands. So you don't have to buy a snow shovel, but you get a taste of all four seasons. Leaves changing colors, nights you can sleep with your windows open, and you actually get to bring back out that jacket you bought years ago. Maybe you're looking for sun and summer years around, but I know for many, they say the vanity wears off pretty quick. As far as stats of what we see here in the Columbia region, that way you can compare to where you're coming from or where you're considering to move in Florida, because I know the Panhandle has seen snow where the record low in the Keys is 41. So there's a lot of diversity when it comes to their weather. Either way, right here in the Midlands, the Columbia, Lexington, and Lake Murray area, the average high in summer is about 85 with the average hottest month being July at an average high of 92 and low of 73. As far as the winter, the average high temp is below 63 with the coldest being January with a high of average 56 and a low of 37. And of course, on the topic of weather, probably one of the top reasons people have fled Florida recently, hurricanes. It's no surprise that Florida has had their fair share of category four and five hurricanes. Most people from Florida will tell you they're really not that bad and oftentimes it's overhyped on the news. But in recent years, many have told me the intensity of them was just a little too much for them. And it scared them enough that it was time to pack their bags and move out of being hit by bad hurricanes year after year. Of course, right here, we're still prone to hurricanes in South Carolina, but knock on wood, we haven't had anything greater than a category four make landfall here in South Carolina. And at that, there have only been three category four and one category three. As well, from 1851 to 2023, 
While Florida saw the most hurricanes any state had at 121 ranked, here in SE, we ranked fifth with only 34. Again, this is ranked categories one plus. There are of course more tropical storms that have come through both states. As well, one of the big reasons the Midlands became a hotspot is being inland, most of the times by the time they get to us, they're downgraded to just about tropical storms. Now, Hurricane Hugo in 1989 did make its way through the east edges of Columbia, transitioning from a two to a one right here around the Midlands. Those from Florida know that what we see here in the Midlands is relatively minor compared to what they have to deal with in Florida. And it's a happy trade-off that they're glad to take. And before we dive into some of those bigger ones, cost of living, schools, crime, and more, as someone who relocated here back in 2015, I know how challenging it is to try and go at this alone. You're looking at homes online, watching videos like these, driving through neighborhoods on Google Maps, and trying to find the best home and truly area for your family. Well, my team and I have literally been helping people from all over the country relocate here. So feel free to give us a call or shoot us a message on our website. That way, you don't have to go at it alone. With that said, have you ever personally been to South Carolina? We often get people that have vacationed in Myrtle Beach, Hilton Head, Kiowa, Island or others that went to basic training at Fort Jackson right here in Columbia. Let me know in the comments where you have visited. Now let's talk some more stats about where people from Florida that are leaving are typically going as well as where are the majority of people coming from that are moving here specifically to Lexington, South Carolina. See if there's a comparison. Hopefully give you an idea of where we stand and maybe see if we can't get more people to consider the Midlands of SC as they look around the area. So Redfin has this really neat tracker where you can see where people are coming from, where they're going. So let's start with who's coming to Lexington, South Carolina specifically. This is one of the areas I'm gonna to compare to most simply because most of you that I talk to are not looking at living in the downtown Columbia area. You're looking around the suburbs around Columbia, Lexington, Irmo, Chapin, Blythewood, and so many more. And Lexington, just to be honest, tends to have a slightly higher price point. So we're gonna use that as a reference just to be fair and doesn't make it seem like I'm picking the lowest price point to make it sound good. But either way, they are coming in in order from New York, New York, Washington, DC, Charlotte, North Carolina, Los Angeles, California, county I came from, Boston, Massachusetts, Philadelphia, PA. On that, I've had almost the same amount of people from PA call me as Florida, so we should probably make one of these coming up soon too to compare PA. But either way, Charleston, South Carolina, and number eight, Miami, Florida. Now, with that said, where are most people going when they leave Florida? Now, this is general Florida, and of course, we're gonna talk about migration out of the state, as of course, people do move around the state. So leaving, they're going to Sacramento, California, Las Vegas, Nevada, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, Salisbury, Maryland, Nashville, Tennessee, Phoenix, Arizona, and Portland, Maine. So we're not technically one of the top hotspots that Florida is seeking out, at least specifically the Midlands, but obviously we're still getting a decent amount from Florida in general. Now let's talk the next big one that really sparks a lot of interest for people, cost of living. So while the idea of no state income tax excites many, does it add up? Well, let's see. So I researched a lot of resources, so it wasn't just hearsay, my opinion, but let's just start with the stats. For starter, there's an awesome site called Best Places, and that compares all categories, from housing to healthcare, from healthcare to food, utilities, housing, and more. And of course, we'll dive into housing costs specifically in a little bit here, but let's start with the generals. And instead of comparing general floor on this one, I'm actually gonna hit some of the top areas that I've gotten calls from. So according to the site, overall cost of living in Lexington compared to these, we'll start with Tampa. Lexington is 13.2% less expensive than Tampa overall when it comes to cost of living. Lexington is 24% less expensive than Miami overall. Lexington is 5.5% less expensive than Jacksonville. Lexington is 13.2% less expensive than Fort Myers. I know Naples and others are higher, so I gave you the benefit on that one. Lexington is 5.2% less expensive than Panama City Beach. Now let's break down some of the other numbers to compare. So we'll start with property tax. In Florida, it varies a lot depending on where you live, what county and area. And they have what I could find as an average of 0.91% of assessed value. SC has a slight variance with average, but we tend to land around the 0.6%. Lexington comes in right around that at 0.61%. 
Now, of course, we haven't gotten to, like I said, the average home cost, because even if we had identical property taxes, you'd be saving simply on the home prices. But we'll get into that in just a minute. Now, continue on with the economy, unemployment rate. In Florida, it's 3%. In South Carolina, it's 3%, so similar on that. Sales tax general in Florida is 7%. Sales tax general in Lexington is about 7% as well. Income tax, again, no state income tax in Florida. Income tax in SC is a scale that ranges from the bottom at 0% to a top rate of 6.4%. Now let's dive into more, childcare. According to move.org, South Carolina is 46th most expensive at 6,507 annually, taking up 12.5% of the median income. Florida is more, but still in the bottom 20 at 8,260 annually, taking up 15.6% of the median income. Now before we dive into average home cost, education and more, there's another big thing when it comes to cost of living. Toll roads in Florida. That's right, we like to vacation in Florida. So we ended up buying our easy pass. But for those considering the area, be prepared as you'll find a decent amount of toll roads throughout the state. And these are not just expressways like we had in California shortcuts. We were heading into Pensacola. In order to avoid the toll road, it would have taken us an extra hour going around versus paying the toll and being able to be in our hotel in 10 minutes. Now those short trips, they're really not that expensive. But of course, when you're living there, that kind of stuff can add up. On that topic, a quick note on traffic in Florida. I had a client that spent his entire life throughout Florida, mostly South Florida. He said Florida traffic was much worse than he found here in the Midlands. Now with that said, he said Lexington is what it was like years ago in some of the suburbs around Florida. And he could see 10 years down the road comparing to Florida town traffic with neighborhoods lined up, stoplights back to back every block. So we're not there yet, but he was worried in that area specific, we may get there. But comparative, he said traffic was a lot easier to get around here than some of the nightmares of Florida. Either way, continuing on with the cost of living and we're diving into housing a little bit here. So I often get people telling me about their CDD fees. At first I was confused, but once they explained them, we had similar in California, but they were called Melaroos, essentially a fee to help set up all the local roads and municipalities when a new neighborhood is built. In Florida, what I can find, they say they range, but are typically 15 to 30 year terms. Once the term is up, then that fee goes away. Most CDD fees range from what I could find 120 to 2000 per year. Obviously a wide variance in there. Maybe somebody in the comments can let us know what they paid in CDD fees. Now, again, we don't have these in South Carolina, at least not here in the Midlands, but let's talk HOA fees as well while we're on the topic. While you may have more extensive amenities like pickleball courts and more, my research found that they come in in Florida as an average of $100 to $500 a month in HOA fees. Here in the Midlands on single family homes, because as a side note, townhomes we're starting to see more of here in Lexington, but aren't very prominent and obviously have higher HOAs. And condos, we really don't see a ton of either. I know I've been asked and they're just not that prominent in the area. But either way, going back, we see a range. We have a ton of neighborhoods here in the Midlands with zero HOAs. That's right, you can avoid HOAs. But on the low range of those that do have HOAs, we see around $100 a year to $600 a year. Yes, I said a year, not a month, depending on the amenities. On the high end, with more amenities, we max out what I could find at $2,700 a year in neighborhoods like Saluda River Club. That does include gymnasium, multiple pools, adults only pool, access to the river, community events, clubhouses, parts of the neighborhood that actually include front yard maintenance, and so much more. So I've done an actual entire video about this neighborhood in the past if you wanna learn more, but hopefully that gives you an idea of the range that we see here in the Midlands. Now, on that topic, I just need to touch on 55 and older communities, real quick. Yes, I know a lot of you are young families looking to relocate, but at the same time, I get a lot of retirees considering the state as well. 55 and older neighborhoods are honestly not that common here in the Midlands. We don't have anything like the villages. Del Webb is not here yet. And there's honestly only two neighborhoods I can think of that are true 55 and plus. The nursing homes, to be 100% honest, kind of have a lock on the retirement communities with their own independent living homes. Now, with that said, we have sections of neighborhoods that are geared toward those looking to downside, but not exclusive, where all the homes are main floor living, front yard maintenance, annual pressure washing, including the HOA, but they're just not exclusive to 55 and older. Just wanted to cover that as I know I've gotten this question a lot from people coming from Florida. But let's talk about the other big one I heard about, reasons people are fleeing Florida when it comes to cost of living, property insurance. Now this all depends on where you live, but most have told me 
they save significantly from Florida. I'm talking about half or more. One site I found said the average home insurance cost in Florida is $4,218 a year based on $300,000 of coverage. As well, I've been told about this whole 15 year old roof insurance where if your roof is over 15 years old, you gotta get this special insurance. Even if it's a tile roof that's slated to last longer, they still hit you with it. Now, again, hopefully someone can dive into the comments and share their experience of property insurance in Florida and where you're at. Because again, there's a lot of different information about this. I've heard a lot of different things. So hopefully you can give us a perspective of what you're dealing with down there. But to give you an idea, we personally on our house pay around $1,000 a year and our dwelling coverage is considered a little above 300,000. Now again, this is one of the benefits of being here in the Midlands because as you get closer to the coast and you start to see more floodplains and threats of hurricanes, these numbers can go up. We have a very, very small amount of homes in the Midlands that actually land in floodplains. To date, I do not think I have anyone that has ever bought a home that required flood insurance. So it's easily avoidable and again can help save you on your insurance. Again, in the end, I would love some people from Florida to chime in the comments what you're paying in insurance because again, there's a lot of information out there and I want some of those with boots on the ground that can tell me, again, I've had plenty of people call me telling me that they save money by moving here to South Carolina specifically on that one. Now again, before we dive into home prices, one place Florida does edge out South Carolina, especially in the Midlands, is entertainment. Look, between Disney World, Universal, the beaches, multiple cruise ports, multiple pro football teams, baseball teams, soccer stadiums, multiple college teams, Michelin rated restaurants, we have none of those in South Carolina, nightlife, club scenes, concert venues, and so much more, we honestly just do not compare. Yes, we have the 50,000 acre Lake Murray with restaurants on the water, boating, fishing, you name it, as well as rivers with kayaking, bike trails, walking trails, state parks, minor league baseball teams, the University of South Carolina Gamecocks, festivals, fairs, smaller concert venues, and so much more. And of course the beach about two hours away. But in the end of the day, while there is a ton to do here in the Midlands, I have to give credit where credit is due. If you are looking for entertainment, nightlife, and more, Florida hands down wins this. Now granted, with that said, some of you have told me you're over the vacation towns, you're over the traffic it brings, the noise, the long waits for dining, you're looking for something a little slower of a pace. Well, I guess in that case, we edge out Florida. Guess that's where perspective comes in and opinions. But I know that is not for everyone. And truly Florida is only a day's drive from SC to vacation. We have literally visited Florida every year since we moved here to South Carolina. So it may not be a make or break, but with that said, let's talk home prices, as this is the other big one I've heard recently why people are fleeing Florida. I've been told that their money just doesn't go as far and many are now priced out. So let's compare median home sold price. And again, I'm gonna break down different areas around Florida just to be fair. So Orlando, median price comes in 395K. Tampa, 416K. Miami, 570K. Jacksonville, 311K. Fort Myers, 366K. And our favorite vacation spot, Panama City Beach, for reference is 430K. We actually have a good friend that grew up in Chipley outside of Panama City and they introduced us to Panama City Beach and we love it. But either way, the entire Columbia region, to give you an idea, came in at 263K median. And of course, because I have been comparing a lot to Lexington, at the same time, I pulled Florida was 300K. So less than every single one of the areas I pulled in Florida. Now, let's talk income and the job market, because obviously that's relative to the cost of living. When it comes to income, according to the most recent census in 2021, the median household income in Lexington was 73,785. In general, in Florida at the same time, median household income was 61,777. I did compare this to some of the other areas I had priced out, and this was actually better than most, so I gave you all the benefit of the doubt in that one. Now, I will say, of course, some of these cities in Florida, I have been told they are much bigger, as I said, and so they have a lot more diversity when it comes to the type of jobs. More jobs in the tech space, pharmaceuticals, and others where people found an easier time finding a job there than here. Of course, with work from home, many people get to retain their jobs, no matter where they are, but at the same time locally, 
we have seen a lot of growth when it comes to the diversity of jobs and industries coming out here, especially with the announcement of Scout Motors coming to the area with the plant, as well as the corporate facility with the growing Bull Street District that does have some tech industry in there. We've just seen a lot of growth in the area. But again, as I said before, with those sprawling downtowns just brings a lot more diversity with those jobs. Now, of course, before we continue on, I've had plenty of people visit from Florida and they decided the Midlands of South Carolina was not for them. Whether they found home in another part of the state or another state entirely varied. There are definitely differences between Florida and South Carolina or wherever you originally came from if that wasn't your initial starting point. That's why I recommend you check out some of my other videos where I shared the reasons people said no to South Carolina to see if the Midlands of South Carolina is right for you before you hear that price point and jump up and say, yes, we're coming there. But with that said, before people start chiming in the comments, because they always do when I bring up Columbia, South Carolina and all of South Carolina in general, to be 100% honest, both Florida and South Carolina ultimately have crime considered higher than the national average. Now, of course, I've said this before, this all depends on where you land. Yes. We know many major cities across the country tend to have higher crime. Unfortunately, it just feels like it comes with the territory of a big city. But when you move out to the suburbs, oftentimes those ratings tend to look a lot better. So I just tell people, do your research, ignore some of the comments, even though it can be difficult, and check out the crime ratings in the area you're considering. And then of course, compare it back to where you're coming from, because that's one of the things I've realized perspective-wise. I've had people like, hey, I got this crime map and I've seen all this crime around the area. And I'm like, have you pulled it up for where you live? And they pull it up and it's like, whoa, there's a bunch of crime around me, right? Perspective usually comes down to our experience with it. And if you've never personally experienced crime, you think you're in a low crime area. But then you start looking on these crime maps and you're starting to see little dots pop up in different places. And it's like, ah, okay. So that's why I say you always got to compare those things to where you're coming from. Because I did the same thing, right? When we moved here, we've personally, knock on wood, never been a victim of crime. And so I was like, doesn't seem like a bad air. And all of a sudden I'm getting these people commenting like the crime, the crime. And so I pull it up and I was like, oh, well, I guess that's where they're getting their information from is these stats online. Again, that's why I say you gotta research it because everybody's perspective is different. But let's dive into school. According to US News, when comparing high schools, we're just gonna go with that, save time before diving into every single level of school. I know you got kids in different grades, but let's do high schools. Florida has 9.2% of their schools ranked in the top 5% nationally. 18.3% ranked in the top 10% nationally, and 38.7% ranked in the top 25% nationally. Now, South Carolina has 1.3% ranked in the top 5% nationally, 4.9% ranked in the top 10%, and 21.2% ranked in the top 25% nationally. So overall, Florida, it's easier to find a nationally ranked school, but of course, that doesn't mean you can't find some right here in South Carolina. And to be truthfully honest, right here in the Midlands of South Carolina, we have one of the three magnet schools in the state that land in the top 5%, as well as public schools that land in the top 10% and top 25% nationally ranked high schools. So while overall Florida may win as a whole, where you're specifically looking for a home in the state may be comparable when it comes to the schools. Again, overall, there's a lot of pros to both Florida and South Carolina. And in the end of the day, I can't tell you which one is better for you. There's plenty of things that I love about Florida. And again, we visit there every single year but of course there's plenty of things that have made me realize that it's more expensive than I initially thought even with no state income tax so that's why hopefully this gives you a little bit of an idea of how South Carolina and Florida compare hopefully help you make a better decision of whether or not Florida or South Carolina is right place for you or if it's time to leave Florida and consider South Carolina either way if you decide South Carolina may be your next home don't hesitate to reach out. And if you're still trying to figure out where in the Midlands of South Carolina you wanna move, check out this playlist over here. As I literally break down all the areas, Irmo, Lexington, Chapin, Blythewood, Columbia, and so many more to help you hone in on what's that right area for you and your family. 